Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Christian Apologist Podcast, and I am your host, Richard Long. Today is the day after Easter, the day our Lord and Savior rose from the dead. I pray and hope that you had a wonderful Easter Sunday with your family and friends, and hopefully went to church. In today's episode, I want to talk about the divine hiddenness argument. Now, the divine hiddenness argument, I think it has four or five premises to it, but really what it boils down to is this. And uh, Christians and atheists ask this alike, so it's not just atheists, it's Christians that ask this too. But it's basically, if God truly wants everyone to know him and to know that he exists, why doesn't he just show himself to everyone? And so we are going to look at this today, and we're going to uh, break down this argument on why I believe and, and what I think are the reasons why God just doesn't show himself. And uh, I made some PowerPoint bullet points here, but uh, we're going to start off with, uh, for one, if God does exist, and this is for the atheist, but if God does exist, and if he is the creator and the sustainer of all things, then what makes you think that he should have to show himself? Who are you, who are we, to tell God, this infinite being, and us being finite beings, to tell this all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving God that he has to present himself to us so that we will believe that he exists? I mean, we are literally nobody. I mean, our lives come and go, and we are nothing compared to his awesomeness. So what makes us think that we should have to declare when and where he has to present himself just so that we will believe that he exists? And just be, and yesterday was just Easter Sunday. So let me not remind you that God did come down. God, God did come down in a human form, and that was of Jesus of Nazareth, to show himself to the world, and we killed him. We murdered him. So don't sit there and say he's never shown himself. He has, and that's what we did to him. Um, also, you know, and a lot of people say, well, why doesn't he show himself now? Well, I mean, he showed himself over 2,000 years ago when we murdered him. So why would God have to keep sending Jesus back every so often to prove that he exists? I mean, why would he have to do that? We murdered him the first time he came down. So, and that was 2,000 years ago. So no telling what we would do to him nowadays. I mean, honestly. Um, let me give you a story. Um, I don't know where the story came from exactly, but I'm going to kind of break this down for you. So there was a prince a long time ago, and he saw this peasant girl, and at first sight, he was in love with this peasant girl. And so he went to his father, the king, and he said, Father, I'm in love with this peasant girl. How can I win her love? And the king says, you have to renounce your throne. He said, see, because if you want her to truly love you for who you are, you need to renounce your throne and go to her as a peasant boy and win her love. And then you will know that she truly loves you. But if you go to her as a prince, then she might just go with you because you're a prince and that one day she might become a queen. So if you truly want to know she loves you, you have to renounce your throne. And that is exactly what Jesus did. Jesus gave away his throne. Jesus gave up his throne. Jesus gave up all his holiness and his, his righteousness. And he came down as a peasant to us to win our love over. See, now Jesus, if God would come to us as he is, if Jesus would have came to us as the, the king, well, then a lot of people just would have went with him because he was the king. It wasn't because they truly loved him, truly wanted to follow him. They would do it because of what he had to offer them. And so Jesus renounced all of that and came to earth as a peasant to win us over. And I think that's a great way to look at, you know, part of the divine hiddenness of God. Um, two, look around us. I mean, seriously, just look around us. You can see God everywhere and everything. 
He is the creator and the sustainer of all things. Just the earth staying exactly where it's at. Just all the planets and the stars, not just, you know, taking off and going out, you know, and like swinging off in outer space. They're, they're staying put. God is sustaining this as we speak. He has done it since the beginning of time, and he's doing it to this day. Look at the vast, the vastness of the universe. Look at the the holiness of the stars. Look how many there are. I mean, it's really, really amazing on what God has done. And and I believe that's what the Bible is saying. If you want to see God, you just look around. I mean, just look around. He's everywhere. He truly is. And honestly, God is not far from each one of us. In fact, in Acts 17, 27, he said this so that they might seek God and perhaps they might reach out and find him, though he is not far from each of us. So God isn't really, I mean, he's not far away. He's omnipresent. He's around us. He's all. He's everywhere at all times. So he's not far from us. And, you know, if if you're a Christian, and if you sometimes say, like, you know, I just feel like God isn't close to me or something like that, you know, that's really saying something about your mental state. And you need to look at your life because God is everywhere. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. So if you are feeling like God isn't close, then what is it that you are? are doing that is taking you away from God and not towards God. I mean, there's got to be something that's going on because God can't leave his own presence. He's there. He's around you. He's around all of us at all times. And if we are uh, speaking of God himself as why God himself, well, and, and many verses in the Bible, it says that if we were to see God in all his holiness as he is, we would die. We would die because he is so holy and we are so unholy. So, I mean, in a way, God not showing himself, you know, as as holiness in in front of all of us, he's actually saving us because he knows that we would die. Did you know I've actually had an atheist tell me? um, He said this and so did Matt Delahunty from, uh, I think it was the Atheist Experience. He's also said this, that Even if God himself was to present himself to them, and this is two different atheists, if he was to present himself to them personally, they still wouldn't believe. Okay, one person says that he wouldn't believe because he would believe he's having like a a mental breakdown or he's having a hallucination. So he still wouldn't believe. So that would not even be enough. And I don't remember exactly what Matt Delahunty said, but I've heard many other atheists sit there and say that even if they knew that God existed, they wouldn't follow him because they think he was too evil. So the question bears the, I mean, bears the question of why is it that atheists sit there and claim this divine hiddenness, <clears throat> sorry, claim this divine hiddenness, but yet also sit there and say that even if God would present himself, they wouldn't follow him. See, there's a difference between believing that and believing in. God doesn't just want us to believe that he exists. He wants people to believe in him and to love him and to follow him. So yeah, if God just wanted someone to believe that he exists, I'm sure he could and all his powers figure out a way to get that message across to us, like right it across the stars, God exists, or put it in a DNA cell, you know, made by God. There's ways he could prove that he exists, but it's not, he just doesn't want people to believe that he exists. He wants people to believe in him. He wants people to love him. He wants people to follow him. And also, if God came down and just, and showed himself to the world, like wrote it across the sky or whatever, I mean, it's, it, it is and it isn't, so I don't know if I'm going to word this right, but it's almost messing with free will. See, because with free will, we have the right to choose to believe something and to not believe something and to follow something and to not follow something. So if he showed himself, then there's no question that people would have to believe that he exists unless you want to believe it's a hallucination, a worldwide hallucination or, or whatever you want to call it, like some of these atheists have said. But that doesn't mean that you're going to believe in him. See, even the devil, even Lucifer, 
and the angels, which we now call demons, were in the presence of God. They believed that he existed. They had to. They lived with his presence. They lived around him. But they didn't believe in him. They didn't put their trust and love and hope into him. And so that's why they were casted out of heaven. So it's not just a matter of fact of God wanting us to believe that he exists. He wants us to believe in him. In fact, that's what it says in John about Jesus. He says that, you know, that all these things happened with Jesus so that we can believe that he exists. But by following his teachings and everything else, then we can believe in him as our Savior. So there's a difference between believing that God exists and believing in God, believing that Jesus existed and believing in Jesus. And also, if God, so atheists, you're just going to have to work with me here. If God does exist, if God does exist, and God exists with all the attributes that we talk about, the omnipresence, the omniscience, um, omnibenevolence, um, uh, omnipresent, if he has all these qualities, all these qualities to him, if this is who, what makes God God, and he's all-knowing, he's omniscient, he's all-knowing, and if he knows each and every single one of us, and he knows that, because God wants us to be saved, he wants everyone to be saved way more than we do. That's a fact. And if he truly, if he truly does know everyone, and he's truly omniscient, then don't you think that God would do everything in his power to get you to believe in in him, not just that he exists, but to believe in him and to love him so that way we will be in his presence forever. So the Bible also says that, um, let me find the verse, Acts 17, 26 through 27, it says, from one man he has made every uh, nationality to live over the whole earth and has determined their appointed times and the boundaries of where they live. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out to him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. So we have to seek God. If you don't want to seek God, you're not going to believe that he exists. So you're definitely not going to believe in him existing. But he has put us all in a place that if we truly want to seek him, we would find that he existed and then we would believe in him. And the reason he does it, I believe, is because if you're not seeking him, then you're probably one of the people that isn't going to believe in him if you came across him. So, but if you're seeking him, and if you find him, then there's a higher chance that you are going to believe in him. God knows each and every one of us, and he knows what it's going to take for us to believe that he exists and to believe in him. And he knows which ones will never believe in him no matter what. No matter what. So some of you atheists that are just like, well, if God would just present himself, then I would believe that he existed. No, you wouldn't. And the reason I say that is because if that was the case, I'm sure God would figure out a way to present himself to you so that you would know that he existed. And so whatever's happening in your life, whatever you're coming across in your life, God is reaching out to you in one form or another in one way or another, trying to show you that he existed. But you must seek him to find that. And when you seek him and you find that, then you will believe in him because God does not just want us to believe that he exists. He wants us to believe in him. He wants us to love him. He wants us to follow him. He wants us to praise him. And that is not because, you know, he's some God up there just saying, oh, I want everyone to, you know, worship me. He does, but it's not because it benefits him. He is God. He is perfect. There's there's nothing we can do that makes him any better. There's nothing that we can do that makes him any happier. There's nothing we can do that makes him any sadder or, or any less than what he is because he's a perfect being. He does that because it's a benefit for us. That's why he wants us to worship him, because it benefits us. Um, anything else here? Let's see. And I do believe this. I do believe that God leaves enough clues that if someone truly wants to seek him and discover if there truly is a God, they will find him. They absolutely will. Um, there's no there's no doubt in my mind about this. But even if you're not seeking him, God has presented himself around you 
so that you would believe that he existed. And now you can ignore that and chalk it up to coincidence. You can chalk it up to uh, science. You can chalk it up to luck. You can chalk it up to karma. Whatever you want to chalk it up to, that's what you can do. But if you truly, truly want to know if God exists, then you will seek him. And there's not an atheist alive today that has truly seeked God. Because if you have seeked him, then you have found him. And if you have found him, then you will believe in him. Unless you have seeked him and you have found him and you don't want to believe in him. Because either you find his ways to be cruel, or either you find his ways to be not your ways, that you know better than he does. But divine hiddenness, to me, is a joke. I mean, he's not hidden. He's everywhere. And like we can all, like Christians can all talk about their personal experiences on how they found God or how God found them or, or, uh, how they, they learned to come to know that God existed. So none of that really matters to atheists because atheists claim they want God to show himself. But even if he did, I mean, they wouldn't believe in him. They would just believe that he existed. And that's not what God's seeking. God's not seeking to believe that. He's seeking for those to believe in He's seeking for those that would truly want salvation. And so you all have a blessed rest of your week. I hope you had a great Easter Sunday. Let this be a great Easter week, if you will. And I will see you next time. God bless.